Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new big honkin' set of alcohol-based markers. And we are gonna look at the Ohuhu Honolulu brush and chisel tip set of 320 markers. And this was sent to me for review from Ohuhu. I wanna be completely upfront about that. Uh, so let's take a look here. We've got this big brick of a case. Um, it's a, kind of like a canvasy feeling, I would say nylon bag, kind of like what backpacks are made of. This is fairly heavy, but it does have a good uh, carry strap and also a good shoulder strap. And um, this is divided into six sections and it comes with a color swatch that you can color in. Uh, it also comes with a plastic sheet that you can put between your pages of your sketchbook or your um, coloring book if you're using a coloring book or on your table to prevent any leaks from staining your table. Now, one thing I will just mention about using a plastic or a non-porous surface between pages in a sketchbook, it's great, it works great. The only thing is you wanna wipe it down if you get any ink on it because otherwise the next time you do a painting or a drawing with your markers, you might reactivate that ink that's on the paper and it might actually leach up back through your page. So just, just keep it clean and it will work fine. Um, this has a, uh, it's kind of like an insert here. So I guess if you wanted to take that out, you could. Um, it does give you room to put like a sheet of cardstock or your swatches or maybe a small marker pad, some fine liners, things like that in the double walls of the bag. Um, yeah, this will lift right out if you want to. So the only, uh, the only thing I want to mention about this um, is that these are not divided. So when you get these, they're gonna be all jumbled up together. I recommend breaking them up and putting them in color families as close as you can. So what I decided to do to break mine up was um, I put my reds and pinks here. I put my yellows and oranges here. I put my greens here. I put my purpley based pinks and purples here. I put my blues here and I put my grays and earth tones here. And I kind of um, hemmed and hawed about putting um, some of the earth tones in with the yellow oranges because like your browns are really desaturated oranges, but I just didn't have enough space to put them all together. Um, so I ended up doing it this way. There are a ton of grays in this set. So if you're someone who loves grays, there's um, there's your typical cool grays and warm grays, but then you've got the green grays, blue grays, you've got red grays, green grays, yellow grays. Um, it's, it's a lot of gray. So if you like that muted palette, you'll probably really enjoy that. This does include the new pastel colors. I believe it includes all of the colors that are in their um, their Honolulu series. Now this set is the, the traditional Honolulu series. So if we look at this, um, let me just flip my swatch card over so I have somewhat of a blank space to show you. You're gonna get a chisel tip on one side and you are gonna get a brush tip on the other side. Now they also have a version called Honolulu B, which has the brush tip on one side and a bullet tip on the other, on the opposite side. And I honestly think that one would be a little bit more useful because you've got, right here you've got two wide tips and the wide tips both give you pretty good ink flow. So if you had a bullet tip, it would slow the ink flow a bit and be easier to get in your details because it would be finer and you could get in your details. But also because the ink wouldn't flow so fast, you would be able to do your details a little bit better. Or if you're a stamper or an adult coloring book enthusiast, I think having the bullet tip version would be more handy. So if you're on the Ohuhu website, which I will have a 10% off coupon code in the video description for you, um, if you were on ohuhu.com, if you would select what kind of marker you would want, and this is the Honolulu alcohol marker, they also have the um, Oahu alcohol marker, which is the ones that have the bodies like Copics, they're oval, um, but they have a uh, they have a bullet and a chisel tip. But if you, so if you choose the Honolulu and then when you open up whatever size you want, it'll give you the option of having the chisel and brush or the fine and brush. So you can choose whichever one you like. I think if you are a rubber stamper or, um, honestly, I think the bullet brush might be a little more useful. I'm pretty comfortable with the chisel tip, so, um, so I don't mind it. But if I was like, like I said, these were sent to me. If I was buying them, I think I would buy the bullet brush version myself. Um, but they both exist, so you can pick what you want. And then the little ones I just showed you over there, that was the Oahu, and they are chisel and bullet. Um, these, I'm not sure how much these are gonna cost because they are not available to purchase yet. They will not be out until November 2nd. 
Um, generally, their markers that have the brush tips are going around like 70 to 80 cents per marker, which is down from where they originally started at, but there's just so much competition right now that um, I think that's brought the prices down on a lot of these markers. These have a reversible nib, which means if one, if like uh, on your brush nib, I'll show you on the colorless blender. That's where I like to show it because I don't want to get ink all over my hands. Um, so this is, I believe, a uh, 320 colors plus a blender. They don't count the blender when they, um, when they give you the amount, which is kind of cool. So the, uh, hopefully it's not too juicy to grab. Ah, there we go. Um, so if you look at this nib, you can see it's pointy on both ends. This is so if one end frays, you could like, it was that you just turn it around and you put it back in that way and it gives you a whole new lease on life. And that should be adequate for the amount of ink that's in the barrels. Um, I thought I was missing a marker, but it turns out it was laying down flat in the bag. And uh, so I was like, why aren't these markers sitting down? I thought I was missing one after I filled up my swatch and then I started reaching down there. And I said, oh no, I have one laying down on its side. The only problem I had with this whole set was one marker came dry. And so what I did, it was this one right there. Um, Cardinal. Uh, and reds tend to dry. I don't know what it is with reds. I've noticed that reds tend to dry in black sometimes. But um, I put some like Copic colorless blending fluid in it. I put too much in it, honestly. And then I capped it and let it sit overnight and it was fine. Actually, I put too much in so it leaked a little bit, but once I wiped off the extra ink, it was absolutely fine. Um, but if you do get a dry marker, you can contact them and they will send you a new one, which is uh, which is really nice. I think Ohuhu has pretty good customer service. So let's take a look at the color variety here. This is a lot of markers. It's kind of overwhelming. So I highly recommend that you break these up into blending groups. So, or at least break them up in the case. So when you're using them, you can have a good idea of what you're getting. Um, I just swatched on the, the pages they provided. Um, your, the, um, the colors on the color chip on the end look lighter than they will on these swatches. Now this is a fairly absorbent cardstock. So I think what you get on your marker paper is going to be somewhere in between how dark the color is on here and how light the caps are. Um, but I do find the Ohuhu caps in general are a little bit lighter than, um, then the ink will show up when you actually color with it. Uh, once you get used to that, I don't think it's too difficult to go by the, the color caps. Um, the numbering system breaks it up into different color families. So like you've got um, PB, which I would imagine stands for purple blue. You got BG, which I would think would be blue green. You've got G for green, you've got GY for green yellow. You've got E for earth. Um, very similar to, to Copic's naming, but they're, don't, don't think too deep on it because it's not that logical. It'll kind of get you in the ballpark of where your colors should be. But then, I mean, there's some colors and some names that are like, wow, that I would not expect you to call that. Like there's one called like, um, black brown or something. And it's like a, it's like a peachy color. So, you know, just, I would definitely swatch them out and go by what your eyes tell you is going to blend well together. So when I was seeing this, I was wondering if these have the same colors in it as the, the 320 set of Oahu markers that they released last year. All their markers are named after Hawaiian islands. Uh, so this is a Honolulu set with the brush tips. The Oahu set is chill it, chisel bullet. And so I went and I grabbed those markers to compare. And the other, the thing that made me think maybe they are is because the Oahu markers, which were kind of the original Uhuhus, um, they had the same numbering system as our beloved Shinhan touch markering system. So a lot of the budget markers will have that, you know, one is like wine red or old red or whatever, you know, every there, a lot of the budget markers have the same numbering system because they, they use the same inks. Well, when they came out, I think the 200s or the 320, I can't remember which set it was. One of the sets, they changed their markers. So they would have this like little, little stripe on the end and which is really kind of classy looking. I like it. Um, and they changed it. They changed the numbering system. So instead of just a random number, they would have a color letter like, you know, G for green, R for red, E for earth, so on and so forth and a number. And so I thought, oh, maybe that's why they changed it. So they would be the same as the brush markers because that would be so logical and helpful <laughs> for us marker artists. But sadly, that is not the case, but I did um, I did find a few colors that were the same names and the same names seem to be the same here and here. And the other handy thing is I've noticed that a lot of their names are the same names as Copic, not the same color numbers, but if you look at the name like Min Mignonette, for instance, um, 
Where'd that guy go? Uh, right there. That looks identical to Copic's Mignonette. And they have Mignonette in the old style marker, but just a different name. This is G796 and this is G110. So it's not like they just changed the first number, which would have, again, been so logical. Just like give all the ones from Oahu like four at the beginning of their numbers and all of the, you know, brush ones five or something, you know, to make it logical. But sadly, it's not. Even the color swatches aren't all the same, you know, you think, well, boy, it'd be so handy if they just at least did the swatches in the same order, but, uh, but no, but probably the, the chances are low that you would, um, that you would get the 320 set of both, but I just thought, boy, that wouldn't that be handy if you're someone that's always been using the classic version and you decide you want to get a set of the brush version, the, the color numbers would match, would match across the, uh, the spectrum. I mean, how difficult would that be? Maybe it's because they are doing open stock for some of their colors and um, and they want to be able to, like when they have their SKUs for people to reorder, they don't want to get confused. I'm not sure, but, um, but I wish they had at least the same like last three digits or something so that, because otherwise, why did they change the numbers from their original numbering system? I just don't get it unless they're just trying to look different than the other budget markers out there because these are in the budget realm. Uh, so I did some artwork with the brush markers. Now I've used these and if you search Ohuhu on my YouTube channel you'll find all kinds of tutorials done with uh, mostly time lapses because markers I tend to time lapse um, with those markers. Here I just did a basic um, a basic drawing and this is actually in my um, my new class, alcohol marker workshop. Um, they blend really well. Um, I didn't have any problem picking colors or anything like that. They worked really well. And then I did this one here. Again, they they blended really well. They worked fine. I got nice solid even coverage on in like a large area there. Um, yeah, they they do the trick. They're they're your typical fiber based brush marker. Since they're reversible, you got that little extra bang for your buck, but I'm noticing a lot of those markers that I'm seeing now are using those reversible nibs. They are legions better than the ones that came out back when when affordable brush markers started to hit the market. Um, there was the Studio 71 by Darius. There was um, Michael's had a set. I think a lot of the, um, the big box stores had their own set of brush markers. There was the Art Alternative ones. Um, Blick... Blick the Blick store had one, not their Blick Studio brush markers, which are divine. They had one called Blick Illustrator, which is confusing because there's also Spectrum Noir Illustrator, but Blick Illustrator were those kind. And they were, they were fine at first, but then they'd fray really quickly. And sometimes like they did this like funky gunk on the end of the tips where the salt was separating from the dye. Um, they went to mush in no time. Um, and that has not happened with any of the, uh, the Ohuhu brush tip markers. So luckily they never had run-ins with those. Um, those other lower quality budget brush nibs, but these these are not Copic quality. They're not um, they're not the foam rubber nibs like you will get in the Copic markers, the Altenew markers, the uh, Blick Studio brush markers, or the um, Prismacolor or Winsor Newton Pro marker brush markers. So they definitely are stuck down, but you're also paying a third of the price or a seventh of the price in the case of Copic. So you know you gotta you gotta temper your expectations a little bit there. Um, my opinion on a set of 320 markers, I've got to say, um, I, that's a lot of markers. And even though in my storage behind me that you see when I film Sat Chat, I have I'll, I have hundreds of markers, open stock markers, and I, I separate them all by um, by color family. I don't find that as overwhelming as I find this for some reason. Um, it's nice to have the variety. Um, maybe if, I think putting them like this makes them much less overwhelming than how they come. So I would definitely recommend you, you swatch them out and you break them up into color families. Maybe even, um, maybe even break them up further, like with like, you know, put your, uh, your yellow oranges together and your green yellows together and, you know, so split them up even more if you have some way to do that, if you have some storage. I like how this case is kind of squared off so you can zip it up and tip it on its side to keep your both of your ends of your markers inked. That's really handy. Um, I don't know what they're going to cost, so I would say if they're un... I would imagine they're going to be under a dollar a marker because otherwise this is going to cost over $300 and that's going to be... I think that's going to be a hard pass for people. If you're going to spend $300, you may think about getting like a set of 72 Copics at that point. Um, so 
I would imagine they're going to be more around the 70 cents a marker range, but I can't say. When a product is new, when a Hoo releases a new set, they tend to be really popular and sell really well, so there may not be the incentive to, um, to mark it down, but... Uh, I think they're decent. I've reviewed these markers before. I don't think the quality has changed. Uh, there are a lot more pastel and pale shades and muted shades. So I do find those types of markers tend to feel a little bit drier. So my impression, my first impression using these for artwork, I was thinking they felt a little drier, but I just think it's because they've expanded the lower, uh, the lighter color range. They did come out with a new set of uh, pastel markers that are included in this that are not that are different from their old set of 48 pastel markers but um, if you just need pastel markers I think I would just get one of those pastel sets and add it to what you already have because a lot of the colors are very similar um, I mean they're gonna be if you've got 300 and, and um, if you've got 320 of them but you know it's completely up to you it's up to you whether you want that many markers or not and if the price is within your budget I think they're fine I think the quality has remained pretty good for Ohuhu products over the years and um yeah I will link to these on the Ohuhu website I'll also link to them on Amazon so you can price compare just keep in mind if you're trying if if you want the brush the marker that's got the brush and the bullet then um they'll be under two different listings on Amazon so I'll try to well if they're up by the time this video is, I think the video is going to go up before these markers are out for sale. Um, so when you're ordering on Amazon, I would just make sure that you're choosing the the tips that you want, basically. And if you don't care about having a brush tip, you might you'd be better off going with the cheaper Oahu version that has the chisel and the bullet, because it's it's going to be like half the price. So. Um, you know, it just depends on, on what you want. You, brush nibs cost more. They cost more to buy replacement nibs. It, that's that's what's costing more. And um, and if you don't care about that, if you're happy to use a chisel nib in place of a brush, then you can save some money by getting the bullet chisel combination. But yeah, my, my opinion still stands the same on a, on a Huhu products. I think they're pretty good. I think they're good for the price that they're at. Um, they're not the same quality as Copics or any of the other foam rubber brush nib products, but they're a third of the price of any of their nearest, you know, budget Copic competitor that have the better nib. So yeah, I think they're, I think they're, uh, I think they're decent and the color range is beautiful if you want that many colors. So there you have it. If you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments down below. I will be happy to help you if I can. The links in the video description are affiliate links, which means if you purchase them, I will get a small commission. Please do not let that influence you to buy something you don't need. Okay. Buy them if you need them, if you want them, if they will enhance your artwork. But otherwise, use what you have and be and and really see what you how far you can push your markers. Because if you already have a set of like 120 markers and you're just like, geez, I wish I had more skin tones, I wish I had more pastels. Well, yeah, you could buy this, but you probably could just buy a set of pastels or just buy a set of skin tones and enhance what you already have. Um, so don't forget that that option exists. It's exciting to see these big these big um, sets, and I do think this is a good value, especially if you don't have any markers and you know you're not going to be buying a bunch of duplicates that you're not necessarily going to use up. I think your pastels are what you use up the most anyway because they're the workhorses. Um, yeah, they're nice, but I just don't want to talk anybody into anything that they might regret later. So... Um, so there you have it. I hope you found it useful. And, uh, I think this would be an awesome Christmas present, to be honest. I mean, you got a, uh, you got someone in your life that loves doing illustration. You've got a teenager that loves to do, um, comic book art, manga. Um, you like somebody who's a big fan of, of illustration or cartoons. Like when I was a kid, my sister loved Disney movies. So I would like draw her all the Disney characters and stuff. She loved it. Anybody into that? I mean, this would be like, a, oh my goodness, crazy, awesome, fabulous present. And, uh, you know, of course it would be great for, for a teen because like they're not gonna have the money to buy this. So it would be, it'd be kind of fun. I think it would be a great, great present. I put it on my, on my, uh, holiday gift, gift guide actually. Cause I thought it would be kind of one of those wow presents, but I just want you, I just want to, you know, give you the straight scoop as much as I can. I think they're nice. It's a lot of markers though. I find myself, if I'm grabbing a set of markers to use, honestly, guys, I grab like a 120 set because I, I find that I can get a lot done. I'm not spending all my time hunting for colors. I'm not getting a headache trying to read all the little the little things, but um, all the little labels. But I will say their, their indexing is good. I didn't have, see any uh, smudged wording. Um, the body of the marker does not have the color name on it. So if you are using a bunch of these, like 
the caps post so you don't have to like let the caps just go willy-nilly. You can post them on there so you don't accidentally get the wrong color if you're doing like a three color blend. You don't have to worry about getting the wrong color on your marker if you post your cap. So definitely you want to do that with this many colors because there's no name on the body of the marker. Something you could do is put a little label sticker on there and swatch it, like color it, color the sticker with your marker and put it on the body of the marker and you could write the name on it if you're worried about that. I don't think that's a big risk of happening, but I will say I love it when I have swatches, like this is a set of markers that I have that I have the swatches. They actually came with swatches to put on the markers and I love that. I think it's, uh, it's so handy because it makes you foolproofly pick the right color. But anyway, this is about like twice as long as it needed to be. I hope you found it useful. And uh, till next time, happy crafting. Bye.